To answer the question, how do you build muscle mass? It's important to get why it's needed. For many, it's seen as a trend, a youth thing, a kind of lifestyle standard. Yeah, but what else? Yet, there are good reasons for gaining muscle besides wanting to look good and keeping up with the times. In this video, we'll talk about how to bulk up effectively, the right way to eat, and how much and how to work out. So, watch the video to the end. It'll be informative and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Your support really keeps us going. Gaining muscle has two tricky parts. First, it's about your body type, your build. Ectomorphs have a tough time gaining mass, especially when they're young. The second part is, it's better to gain muscle, not fat. So, for ectomorphs, the lean ones, you don't need to be super strict with your diet. The main thing is getting more calories for mass growth. Now, for endomorphs, who tend to be fuller, it's good to be picky with your diet, focusing on protein and cutting down on carbs and fats. Firstly, the diet. So, the first rule for gaining muscle is eating right. Considering your body type, lifestyle, what you do, and how you train, ectomorphs can have more fat, like 15 to 20 percent, and lots of carbs, like 55 to 60 percent. But still, focus on protein, at least 25 percent. It's better if most of your protein comes from animals, because plant protein isn't as good for athletes. Ectomorphs burn calories fast, so eat six to seven times a day. It's tough because ectomorphs often don't feel hungry and skip meals. If you're serious about gaining mass, work on that. If you can't eat regular food in the right amounts, use sports nutrition, protein shakes, and gainers. You can also use digestive enzymes to help digest a lot of food. To kickstart your body mass, ectomorphs might need to double their calorie intake. Lots of protein means lots of water. Try to drink 0.5 or even 0.7 gallons a day, especially when you're working out. Secondly, take a break to recover. The next rule is necessary rest. Muscles grow when you rest, especially during the recovery period when your body's fixed up the muscle damage and is ready for more. Usually, this happens on the third and fifth days after working out, so let your muscles chill not only will those who work out two or three times a month not grow, but also those who hit the gym every other day, working the same muscles. To work out more effectively, especially if you're past the beginner stage, use the split method. Do exercises for different muscle groups on different days. Like, Monday is chest, arms, and biceps, Wednesday is shoulders and back, Friday is arms and legs, with this, even with three workouts a week, each muscle group gets almost a week to rest. Thirdly, get the right training program. Another big thing is a well put together training program. It should think about your body, your fitness level, what goals you have and stuff like that. It's good to get a professional trainer to help you with a few sessions and make a workout plan with the right technique. Also, you can think about a few principles to make your workouts better and get over a workout plateau if you're stuck. A big thing is, your body gets used to the same routine, so sometimes you need to shake things up, keep your muscles guessing, and make them grow. This is sometimes called confusion. The isolation idea is to really work one muscle by keeping it separate from others that might help out. Isolation exercises are good for athletes past the beginner stage, where basic exercises don't do enough. The pyramid principle is about upping the load from set to set. For example, start with 50% of your working weight in the first set, go up to 100% in the third or fourth, then taper down again in the following sets. The method based on this principle doesn't always work due to muscles getting overly tired. The priority principle lets you put more energy into working on less developed muscles. 
it's recommended to slot exercises for lagging muscles at the beginning of your workout so that accumulated fatigue by the end doesn't mess up their proper engagement. The combined sets principle involves increasing the number of exercises for one muscle group. This principle suits well-trained athletes. The peak contraction principle calls for the highest muscle tension at the moment of the greatest contraction. Sometimes, the working muscle at the end of the movement experiences minimal tension. So, supplement these exercises with others where muscle tension remains constant, like in exercises on cable machines. There are several other principles that can be applied to make workouts more effective and diverse. But no matter how far you've come in your development, don't forget about basic exercises, about the need to develop supporting and stabilizing muscles, which develop in the process of working with free weights and your body weight. Can you gain mass quickly? Restoring lost muscle mass is somewhat easier than building it from scratch. So, the average figures for most athletes are much more modest. It's considered that in four weeks, with an ideally organized training regime and the right diet, a man can gain around 0.9 to 1 pounds of muscle, and a woman around 0.5 to 0.6 pounds. These are the figures to aim for. Thus, if you do everything right, after two to three months of regular workouts, the change in your appearance will be noticeable to the naked eye. Some athletes gain mass faster, others slower. It's influenced not only by genetic factors and, in particular, body type, but also by the appropriateness of the chosen training system, the quality of nutrition, the level of stress, and so on. For example, a seasonal cold can easily halt progress and even set you back. Troubles at work, a breakup with a loved one, anything can result in a lack of growth after intense training. Avoiding such difficulties in life is impossible. You just have to consider them when planning your progress. How to build a diet for gaining mass. The whole bodybuilding thing stands on two pillars, proper nutrition and the right workouts. Let's start with nutrition. Firstly, a calorie surplus. The most crucial factor for growth is a surplus of calories. If the body doesn't have the energy to build muscles, it won't, no matter how hard you try. Subtract your basal metabolic rate, add the energy spent on daily physical and mental activities, then increase this number by 400 to 500 calories. That's the calorie intake you need. From here, you'll understand how to gain muscle mass for a skinny guy. If there's no visible growth after three to four weeks, add another 400 to 500 calories. Sooner or later, the muscles will start growing. Secondly, an excess of protein. For muscle building, the body needs not only energy, but also building material. Protein derived from food serves this purpose. The proportion of protein in the total calorie intake should be around 30 to 35%. You can approach it from another angle. With active training, the body requires approximately 0.04 to 0.05 ounces of protein per pound of body weight. But if you train very intensively, you can increase it to 0.07 to 0.09 ounces per pound. However, it's not necessary to consume only protein. The body won't be able to absorb an excessive amount. Third, accurate calculation. Like I mentioned earlier, protein should be around 30 to 35%. Keep carbs at 50% and fats at 20%. Don't cut fats below 15% they're needed for hormones. No testosterone, no muscles. Fourth, quality food. Remember, the body needs not just calories, proteins, fats, and carbs, but also vitamins, minerals, and fiber. So, include veggies, fruits, and greens in your diet. Fiber helps digestion and feeds good bacteria, guarding against infections. Carbs should preferably be complex from whole grains, veggies, and grains like buckwheat and rice. Don't worry too much about simple carbs, but if you overdo them, you might end up with more fat than muscle in your growing mass. Fifth, drink more water. Intense workouts and lots of protein require plenty of water. 
a lack of hydration can slow metabolism, and that could put a break on muscle growth. Sixth, smart meal distribution. Spread your meals throughout the day however it works for you. Include proteins in your morning meal and slower digesting proteins in the evening so your body doesn't face protein shortages between meals. If you find it easy to eat larger portions, go for it. But for most people, splitting the larger ration into five, six, or seven meals works better. Avoid long breaks so your body doesn't get hungry and protein synthesis in the muscles doesn't stop. If you can't hit your necessary calorie intake with regular food, use protein supplements or gainers. They can be a good snack between main meals. It's crucial not to quit training, even if you don't see results after a month or two. Keep up with your workouts, tweak your program, and take a close look at your diet. Big biceps and a great back aren't miracles, but the result of hard work, and you'll get what you want if you don't stop halfway. Make sure to give yourself time to rest. Many athletes prefer to train three times a week. If that's too tough for you, stick to two workouts. If it feels too easy, you probably aren't pushing yourself hard enough during the session. And what's your body type, ectomorph, mesomorph, or endomorph? Share in the comments. Friends, we recommend you watch another one of our videos where we talk about what will happen to your body if you give up sugar. It'll pop up on your screen, and I'll also leave a link to it in the description and pinned comment. Thanks for watching this video to the end. We hope it was interesting. If you liked the video, give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. There'll be much more useful information coming up. Until next time.